Today, we're announcing a brand new lens. It is the Sigma 24-70 f2.8 DGDN Mark II. Hi guys, I'm Tim from Sigma and this is my colleague Matt. Hello. Hi. And uh, yeah, we're just going to tell you a little bit about this new lens, what it can do, who it's for, and show you a few sample images. So it's a really exciting day, I think, because this lens is probably, well, actually, let's just show you the two side by side. That's which one uh, you got this there. This is the 24 to 70 f2.8 DGDN. So this is the Mark I, so the first version of the lens. Um, and this is the 24 to 70 f2.8 DGDN 2 which is the new revised, reimagined version. Um, yeah. Again, bringing it in line with our most recent product launches that you've seen, like the 50mm, for example, that's launched last month. <laughs> so as you can see, the lenses are uh, relatively similar in size, but the new one is a little bit uh, smaller. It's about 7% smaller in terms of volume and about 10% lighter. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, once so, you get it in your hands, you can definitely feel the you difference. Can. It's fantastic, especially if you're more conscious about uh, your kit being lightweight, um, a lot more travel friendly effectively in that regard. It is, um, but uh, and even though it's a little bit smaller, it mm. comes with a few extra features that the oh, old yeah. one didn't have or the existing one didn't have. Um, and uh, I guess the most obvious one to mention is the aperture ring. Oh yes, yeah definitely. So again towards the bottom of the lens, you've got the aperture ring here. So again this is now standard on a lot of our newer um, DGDN lenses. Um, Again, it has a lovely, you could probably demonstrate Tim. Um, when you twist the aperture, again, you've got a nice click. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll put you by my mic so you can hear. <laughs> yeah, so that's great if you're looking for more direct sort of kind of feedback, but then you've also got a uh, de-click switch on there as well, so which is absolutely switch. perfect for video. So now when Tim twists the aperture, it's lovely and smooth. So again, perfect if you're using it on gimbals and video shots, especially for places like uh, weddings. If you're filming weddings, for example, you don't want the clicky aperture to be ruining your, your, your sound effectively. Yeah. Um, there's also an aperture lock switch on the side as well. So if you're in the F22 to F2.8 range, it allows you to freely move within there, but not accidentally pop it into the automatic mode. Um, but if you are in auto aperture, it locks it into there. So say you're knocking it out of that mode so yeah super versatile really isn't it yeah good yeah. little function that definitely and the mark one version doesn't have that at all so again your aperture is only ever uh changed through yeah through the cameras so um you still have that option as well if you need to so yeah the cameras that's true um so on the side of the lens um as with the existing version we've got the af mf switch yep. and there's also an afl button on the older one but on the newer one there's two afl buttons so um so that means that you can uh, if you're holding it in landscape orientation you've got a, you've got a button that where your thumb is yep. and you can customize that on certain cameras to loads of different types you know loads of different functions and then there's also one on the top now so that when you're shooting in land, in portrait orientation there's also one where you think so that's really yeah. useful saves your hand being in an awkward position when yeah. you're <laughs> trying to access the button again yes. depending on the camera and um, you can set various functions for that afl button um, and again it could be further customized if you've got the l mount version you in using the uh, usb dock mm. as well so lots of customization av yeah. available Okay, so that's kind of the external. So uh, let's have a look at the internals and what's different there. So I'm just going to pop our hoods off. Yeah. Um, so um, the thing that I really like about this new lens is the close focusing distance. So if you want to shoot kind of macro style close ups, details of insects, flowers, food, whatever, this is a really, really capable lens. And um, the reason is that the, the, the minimum focusing distance that's from the from the sensor of the camera to the, the to the the subject the thing that you're focusing on is 17 centimeters so it's really really that's short very that's, close <clears throat> that's about one to 2.7 magnification 2 .7, ratio. Yeah. Um, so that's at the wide end of the of the zoom range so in real terms that means that 17 centimeters is difficult to understand but in real terms if i just put the hood back on just so that you can get a feel for this oops I'm properly um, <laughs> so you can focus when zoomed out on your subject at one centimeter from the end of the hood so your subject can be there so that is pretty amazing yeah. so if you're at for example if you're at a wedding and you need to take a picture of the of the of the of the ring or yeah. or of uh, a close-up of a flower or whatever it yeah, is table or, set decorations that yeah sort of thing. i mean it's it's incredible really how close yeah. you can get 
Um, so yeah, and actually, I think we've got a few pictures here, haven't we? Um, yeah, let's take a look. So yeah, so if we go to this one here, so there's there's a good example of the the wedding yeah. rings and yeah. the um, uh, yeah. Again, you've got the macro, the focus point right in the middle, which is again exactly what you want. There's a HLA motor built into the uh, newer version of the lens, so that allows it to be a lot more quicker. Uh, when it's focusing and a lot more accurate as well, especially on newer mirrorless cameras. Um, so hence why that is pretty much spot on um, in terms of its focusing point. Yes. Uh, same here as well. Again, you can use eye detect in your cameras. Um, and again, the HLA motor will instantly lock on to your subject. You get that lovely shallow depth of field as well with the f2.8 aperture. Yeah. So super duper, uh, what's that, creativity? Super creativity. That's the word. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The HLA is amazing. It's uh, we used to use stepping motors in our lenses, mm. um, but we've changed to this uh, linear actuator motor, which is, yeah, as you say, faster, quieter, more accurate, uh, yeah. smoother. Um, very, very quick with tracking, IAF, all that stuff. So if you're shooting video stills, whatever, it's super, super quick. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, it, we've I think we've had it in maybe five lenses up until now. So this yeah. is it's quite new tech, um, and yeah, it's built into this one. But, Brilliant, so so fast. It really yeah. is. So, it's already it's all also already been in the 50mm 1.2, the 70 to 200 that's just come out, uh, the 60 to 600. So just some really and the, and the 500mm that just came out. So some really yeah. good lenses. Yeah, so it really a, is. It's a, it's a great um, it's a great motor that is. Um, if we continue on with the close-ups, there's a uh, photo of a yeah. parrot somewhere through here, or a budgie. Oh yeah, there he is. There yeah. he is. <laughs> yeah, he's nice, isn't he? Um, Look how sharp that is. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> again, you can yeah. use eye detect to help with that. Uh, but the internal of the lens, the optics, again, uh, just over the years of developing our technology, uh, we've been able to refine the optics within the lens itself. So corrections for aberrations and increased sharpness have all been packed into here as well. So yeah, you can get shots like this line where yeah. there's so much detail packed in. Not to say you can't get it with a Mark I, yeah. But it's a lot better than the Mark II. <laughs> you can see how close that lime is to the lens. It's almost touching close. it, isn't it? It's amazing. Very, very close. <laughs> yeah. And then some nice flowers, a picture of a chicken. Yep. Um, yeah. Really nice shots there. They're great. <laughs> some food shots. Yeah, it's great for food. Yeah, yeah. And again, if you're a blogger, that kind of sort of thing. Yeah. Um, again, you can take this along and pretty much tick off every single food shot you ever want. Yeah. So, um, so apart from um weddings that we've just mentioned yep. and close-ups what else is this good for yeah it would be a again a fantastic street lens again 24 to 70 millimeter it covers again like a wide angle of view wider than your field of vision yeah up past your field of vision which is about 50 millimeter so up to 70. so it gives you a great range and flexibility to compose your shots when you're shooting street so if we bring up some images yeah, no. there's some, some lovely shots. I think these were shot in France somewhere. I'm not sure who, yeah. um, uh, whereabouts in France, possibly Paris, I'm not sure. Yeah, very Cafe. classic sort of shot that, isn't it? Yeah. And again, just using the 2.8 depth for field on this one as well, you get the lovely drop off from the vegetables that are in the front, so the potatoes in the front, <laughs> through to the carrots to the back. So it seems... Good for carrot photography. Good for I've carrot photography. Good for carrot. So I've always said that about this lens. Yeah, Great. brilliant Perfect. for carrot photography. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. So uh, and, and and actually on that shot of the carrots, you can you can see how smooth the bokeh is, mm. uh, front and back. It's um, it's really nice. It's you know it's got a real sort of prime lens oh, quality to it. It really it? does. Lovely, yeah, it's yeah. eleven bladed aperture on that one. So yeah. uh, on this lens, so you'll be able to get some lovely bokeh balls, mm. really soft, especially if you're using it um, in lower light situations as well, where you've got those lovely catch lights. Yes. And get some lovely smooth bokeh. <laughs> yeah, very much so. That's what you want. Um, and uh, we've actually got a couple of shots here of um, somebody using the lens. Uh, this is the, the wedding photographer who um, yeah, took a few of those images earlier. So the, um, as you can see, uh, on a that's on a, a Sony body there. I guess that's like an A. I think it's an A7 IV. Yeah, A7 IV. Good eyes. <laughs> so yeah, thanks. So yeah, you can see it's pretty well balanced on that body. I would say. Yeah. I would say like, you know, it, it it feels pretty good in the hand. It's not yeah. like front heavy. It's just no. about right. I would yeah. say. And that, as we said, it's ten percent lighter than the previous model. So again, it might not be as visible on camera. Um, but it, especially around the lens, the width yeah. of the lens, yeah. um, that's where a lot of the weight has been shaved off. So especially if you've got a bit smaller hands, you can get to grips with it easier. Um, again, just 
comparison in the weight, it's a lot, lot lighter. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. sound much. Yeah, it's about 90 grams lighter, which is, like um, it doesn't sound that much, but yeah, you're right. So I think, because a lot of people buy the 2470 as a kind of a, as a, as a kind of one size fits all workhorse lens that yeah. they can just, stick on their camera, leave it on all day. Some people hardly take the thing off their camera because they're mm. so versatile and, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, they're, they're, they can, you can shoot almost anything with a 2470. Um, you, you've really completed, um, again, looking at the wedding photos, again, that's kind of like a middle part of like what we call the trinity of lenses, effectively, for wedding photographers. So, for example, you could go for our uh, 14 to 24 yep. millimeter, and then you've now got the 24 to 70 millimeter F Mark II. And then you've also got the new 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8. So you've got a lovely f2.8 range across the whole board. That's true. So again, for wedding photographers, event photographers, you've got that great low light ability and super duper fast optics and HLA motors and all of them now. So yeah, uh, yeah, you, you can't go wrong really. Yeah, I, I agree. And yeah, particularly, I always come back to weddings with these, but mm. they are just perfect for weddings. Perfect. perfect. They really are. Yep. I mean, that's this is an example. So we've got a, yeah. you can shoot your wides, no problem. Yep. I mean, that's well wide enough for an interior. Super wide. Um, you can shoot close ups with really nice fall off. You can do portraits at the tight end. Yeah. Lovely. Um, and a particular yeah, edition things, close up. That yeah, sort of thing I mean, as well. it's perfect. I, I can't, yeah, it's all you need, <laughs> isn't it? Pretty much. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that, that's that's kind of it in a nutshell, really, isn't it? I mean, yeah. uh, there's lots to talk about with the optics and so on, but um, yeah, just in the interest of time. But uh, but one thing that is worth noting is that in, uh, just one thing about the optics is that it's got uh, six uh, FLD elements in it. Um, FLD is a, a kind of a fluorite-like glass that has very similar properties to fluorite, um, mm. and it's. Um, uh, quite expensive to produce, but this has got six of them in it, which is, I think, joint the joint uh, most yeah. we've ever had in a Sigma lens. Yeah, seventy two hundred was the other one. So, yeah, um, so it's yeah, very good quality glass, and there's five uh, a spherical elements in it as well. So it's yeah. a really beautifully built lens with very sophisticated optical um, design. Um, yeah, it helps correct ab optical aberrations, chromatic aberration. Yeah. Again, you've got a super multi-layer coat on there as well, which is across all of our art range. Yeah. So that helps reduce flare and ghosting. So it controls uh, direct light uh, really, really well. You'd be very surprised, wouldn't you? Yeah. Especially if you are shooting yeah, more amazing. towards direct light. Um, yeah, flare yeah, and ghosting. Uh, there. Really, yeah, really pretty really much minimal, eliminated. Yeah. So. Um, other things to mention, the, the hood is lockable and it's got a um, rubber uh, kind of uh, a ring around Great. it at the, the, at the yeah. bottom end so you can take it off and on easily. So yeah, and, it, and it's got that, yeah, the lock mechanism there so you can't knock it off, it's, it stays on until you press that. It's worth mentioning, um, so uh, because it's an art lens, there are, there are rubber um, seals around the, the, around the rings and the buttons and, um, and the switches and that just makes sure that if you're shooting in kind of light rain, you don't yeah. really have to worry too much. Um, they're pretty pretty robust uh, bits of kit, yeah. um, and then obviously the action is very nice on the mm. on the uh, the two rings as well. So it's uh, nice and smooth and easy to use. So very yeah, very, yeah it's um, weather resistant, not weatherproof. That is a distinction that we have to make. Yeah, that, yeah, that's true. Yeah, they're not weather they're, resistant. They're very much not waterproof. Yeah, you can't you can't dunk them, but they're they are yeah. uh, they are pretty. Yummy. Yeah, they do survive quite well. Actually, yeah, if you do, keep yeah. if you keep looking after your equipment there. Last forever, really. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, what about? Uh, so, obviously, it's uh, today's the sixteenth, which is the day when it's uh, announced. Uh, what yeah. about the day when it's released? And yeah. On sale? So it goes on sale on the thirtieth of May. So not long to wait. Nice. Two um, weeks. Two weeks time. Two weeks. Yeah. Not yep. long. End of the month. Um, and it will retail at one thousand one hundred and seventy-nine pound. So nice. Yeah. Nice. Pretty reasonable, I'd say for that. Yeah. Absolutely. The amount of kit and the amount of. Uh, reach it Scott you can get loads out of that yeah you, you know what 2470s I always say they are probably the best value lens you can buy because they are they're such a workhorse lens right. um, they stay on your camera for quite a good chunk of the time that you, mm. you're shooting or mm. uh, well, they tend to anyway um, depending on what you shoot but most for most people they are the most commonly used lens and um, you know I think if you did like a ratio of like cost to the amount of use you get out of it they they come out very well. Really, they really do. And again, if I'm going out with not really any particular sort of type of photography I mm. want to do in mind, twenty four seventy that sort of focal length, I think absolutely so. ideal. Because then you're not having to worry about have I got the right primes? Have I got too long a zoom? Do I not need a zoom? Yeah, one of them. 
Perfect. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> if you were only going to buy one lens, that's it, isn't it, basically? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and again, yeah. The, the resolution and resolving power of the lenses and the megapixels of the cameras, again, getting up to 70 and then even cropping in slightly in after that, yeah. you can get away with so much. Um, and again, with the sharpness, as you saw through the images, you can you can do that quite easily and still have a lovely big image that you can print. So, yeah, it gives you lots of opportunities to create shots. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So. Quick reminder, date and price. Date, 30th. 30th of May. Price. 1179. 1179, but you can pre-order now. You can pre-order now, yep, and you can pre-order either on signaluk.com or any of your local UK retailers. Um, yeah, definitely get in there now if you can. Nice, nice. Well, uh, last thing to mention then, maybe, is that we've got a photo competition running at the moment, which is called Sigma Art Photographer of the Year. Uh, and uh, the only stipulation to entering is that uh, your image has to have been taken on a Sigma Art lens. So like these two here? Yeah, either of those <laughs> would qualify. Uh, so it can't be a Sigma Contemporary, it can't be Sigma Sports, it can't be Tamron or Sony, and it's got to be a Sigma Art lens. Yeah. Uh, and um, there's four categories. We've got People and portraits, we've got our planet, we've got light and shadow, yep. and we've got urban world. So, those four, so if, if either any of those four tickle you fancy, then um, <laughs> yeah, get on our website, sigmauk.com, and you can upload two images per category, so eight altogether. Uh, it's free to enter, and um, yeah, yeah, there's some great prizes to be won. Yeah, definitely, and they're going to be judged by an expert panel of judges, oh, yeah. um, which include our two of our ambassadors, uh, Joe Cornish and Colin Pryor. And Ben Brain. And Ben Brain. Yeah. Three of our cost. Yeah, ambassadors. Um, and also our CEO, uh, Kazuto Yamaki, as well. Yeah, and so, Holly Wren as well. And Holly Wren. Who used to be an ambassador, but yeah, yeah she's yeah. a fashion brilliant fashion So, really good lineup of yeah. they're all brilliant photographers. <laughs> yeah, and then the, yeah, the, uh, yeah, the overall winner is going to be judged by um, our CEO, Kazuto Yamaki. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that'll be, that'll be really good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, lots of good prizes to be won. So, do check it out. Sigma Art Photographer of the Year. And you can uh, enter by going to sigmauk.com. Lovely. Cool. Cool. All right. Lovely. Well, thank you very much for uh, tuning in. Yeah. Um, yeah, make sure if you wanted to check out any of the images uh, that we've shown today, again, they'll be on the Sigma UK website. So make sure to check those out in higher resolution. Um, and yeah, make sure to get your pre-orders in. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> thank we'll you see much. you guys soon. <laughs> see you later. Cheers.